Welcome to Studio Lighting Techniques in Maxwell Render. My name is James Coleman and I'm the Maxwell Render Mentor at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology. Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial series about studio lighting techniques in 3D rendering. For these tutorials I'll be using Maxwell Render but the techniques used should translate easily to any render engine. I had the idea for this series when I was thinking about what I would have liked to have seen when I was first starting out with product visualization, so this series should be less about the render engine itself and more about the overall style. This series will be delivered in a bite-sized style of multiple short videos, so it will hopefully be nice and quick and engaging, but not so short that it's not worth watching. What I'll be doing in this series is starting from scratch, building a typical studio style setup and gradually improving it. Along the way I'll be describing my techniques with general hints and tips and explaining my workflow and methods. So without further ado, let's get started. Here I am in Maxwell Studio and the first thing I want to do is set up my scene with objects. So I've got to go to my library and open some and import some. The first thing I want to do is get a studio backplane. So file, library, objects, primitives, studio. And I want to open one from scratch. Okay, and there it is. Alt and left click to have a look around and if I select it and I can either click it in the viewport or I can select it in the objects manager I can see in my info which is up here as long as I've got display info on the shortcut is I I can see in my info that the dimensions are 10 by 5 by 5 and this is always in meters so at the moment my studio is 10 meters by 5 meters by 5 meters that's really too big for product visualization on the scale that I usually work with so what I need to do is in my object parameters window go over to scale and put it down to 0 0.2 0 0.2 tab 0 0.2 tab 0 0.2 enter okay now my dimensions are 2 1 and 1 so it's 2 meters wide 1 meter tall 1 meter deep and that's exactly what I want that's exactly the kind of scale I want to work with right click and send a scene so the camera zooms in okay now I've got my studio back plane I need my other objects that I want in this scene and first thing I want to do is set up some lights around the outside so again file library objects primitives plane one by one but this time I want to import it okay and there it is select it in my objects manager and it's one meter by one meter that's kind of perfect now I've got to move it in place and I want it just right at the top so in my Y position I'm going to put one and in my scale X I'm going to put 2 to make it 2 meters so that it matches the studio backplane. One thing I do have to do is rotate it so that the normal is facing downwards. The normal is this green arrow which is actually the Y axis but the normal follows the same axis. So I've got to rotate it around on either the X or the Z. It doesn't really matter. I'll do it on the X just because I need it around 180 degrees. And there we go. Now I'd like two planes either side to complete my studio setup. So what I need to do is on the plane one by one is right click and clone and this gives me an exact copy. I'm going to change the scale back to one again and change the rotation back to zero and on the Y instead of one I want 0.5 in position Y and I want position X to be one to move it over to the side. And again I need my Y axis facing into the scene so I need to change my Z rotation to 90. Okay, now I need another one on the other side, so again, right click, clone, and position X now needs to be minus 1, and rotation Z needs to be minus 90. Now I've got my studio set up, I need an object to test with, so I'm going to import a not. So file, library, objects, primitives, not, and import it. Okay, it's kind of big at the moment, so again I'm going to scale it down to 0.5. It's half as big and then I need it sitting on the floor. Now there's no easy way to do this but if I look in my Y scale, my Y bounding box, I can see it's 0 0.406 so half of that is 0 0.203 and there it is, there's my knot on the floor. The last thing I should do before my setup is complete is to rename all of the objects in my objects manager. The knot can stay as it is, I know what the knot is, there's only one of them but this clone of clone of plane one by one should be renamed to left. And I'm going to do that by selecting it, pressing return, and then just typing left, and then return again. Then press up on the keyboard, return, right, return, up on the keyboard, return, top, return, and studio. Well, that's a bit generic, 
so I'll rename it to Infinity Curve, which is the term for it in photography. OK, that's all for now. In the next video, I'll be creating materials and applying them to this scene. For more information about support, consultation and mentoring in CAD and Maxwell Render at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology, email maxwellrenderbrightoncdt at gmail.com.